Today I would like to talk about certain anatomical variations in the right atrium. The clinical significance of these is that during TEE or even transthoracic echocardiogram, these can be mistaken for thrombus or abnormal masses and can cause the patient to have further testing. So let's talk about some of the anatomical and normal variations that can occur in the right atrium. Specifically, the three entities that I want to talk about are the Chiari network, the eustachian valve, and the Crista terminalis. This is a schematic looking at the heart in its four chambers and some of the normal variants that you can see within the four chambers. Within the right ventricle, you can have a moderator band, which is a band, muscular band-like structure that stretches across the entire right ventricle. You can also have prominent trabeculations and prominent papillary muscles, all of which if are abnormally thickened or prominent can look like thrombus, especially if you if the clinical suspicion is already there. Similarly, on the left ventricle, you can have a false tendon, focal hypertrophy, or, or papillary muscle hypertrophy. You can also have trabeculations, all of which can be, again, confusable with thrombus if you're not sure. What is a false tendon? To me, what I tell the fellows is it looks like a cordi that's going nowhere. What you see here is like a string that has the consistency of a violin string going or a guitar string going from the septum to the lateral wall. It does not connect to any structures such as the mitral valve apparatus or uh, anything or papillary muscle. It just kind of extends from one wall to another. That is a normal structure and can only be seen in the left ventricle. In the left atrium, you can have abnormal, you can have very thickened pectinate muscles in the left atrial appendage, which if you're clearing somebody for a TEE cardioversion or preablation, it can look like a thrombus, but just to know that it's good to get different angles of the LAA to make sure what you're looking at is definitely the pectinate muscle and not a thrombus hiding out in the left atrial appendage. Similarly, in the left atrium, you can also have a Coumadin ridge, which extends from the left atrial appendage in the transverse sinus. I will talk about these in a different, the separate talk. Within the interatrial septum, you can have lipomatous hypertrophy of the IAS. What that looks like is fatty infiltrates of the septum in the bottom part and here on the top part with a thinning in between where, on the, where around the foramen ovale lies. It can kind of looks like a dumbbell shape and it can be very prominent and funny looking in many cases. In addition, you can have a aneurysm of the interatrial septum and the septum is sort of excessive and floppy and flops in more than one centimeters in either direction in the left or right atrium. Sometimes when I note that on an echo report we get calls from the medicine team or other consultants not sure what that means we kind of have to reassure them this is a normal variant sometimes increased association with septum secundum ASDs or PFOs but usually of no significant clinical significance. And now let's turn our attention to the three structures in question in the right atrium. First is a Chiari network. What that is, is a mobile net-like structure in the right atrium near the IVC junction. Let's play this video to take a look. It comes from the incomplete reabsorption of the right sinus venosus valve, and it can have multiple attachment points. Sometimes it can look very prominent, like in this case. To me, it looks like party streamers in a kid's birthday party or one of those inflatable men that uh, inflatable people that wave at you from a car dealership sometimes it can look really very prominent and very thick and almost can be indistinguishable from a thrombus that's coming from the svc or ivc in which case it's never a bad idea to do further investigation if you're suspecting a thrombotic picture or if somebody is at elevated thrombotic risk Second, we have the eustachian valve, and what that is is a remnant of the embryological right sinus of venosus valve. It extends here, right out of the IVC, this little cute little C-shaped structure that's extending from the IVC into the RA. And it is exactly what it looks like, which is essentially a valve. In utero, it is a valve that allows the baby to shunt blood from the IVC or the bottom of the body directly through the left atrium, bypassing the pulmonary circulation, which is immature and very 
closed off in utero so it shunts blood directly from the ivc to the la well now the oxygenated blood can be it's so, it's so that that blood can be pumped to the rest of the body and get oxygenated within the placenta so just remember eustachian valve occurs near the ivc this is in opposition to the crista terminalis which is this thick little spoon-like structure that sits next to the svc that is a crescent-shaped muscular ridge that comes from the anterior medial wall of the right atrium it occurs near the svc orifice and it can sometimes extend through the ivc occasionally it can even merge with the eustachian valve looking like one big old structure Embryologically speaking, it comes from the regression of the septum sparium. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. I'll have a slide about that a little bit later. As the sinus venosus is incorporated into the RA wall, the sinal atria node lies superior to the crista terminalis, making this structure especially useful in terms of anatomic landmarks for our EP friends. My last slide is talking about embryology, embryology, and if this slide gives you headaches, don't worry. I will spend a minimal time of talking about this, but to me, it is absolutely crucial in understanding the where the eustachian valve and the crista terminalis comes from. So the sinus venosus, the definition of it, is a primitive right atrium. The two main veins embryologically will insert into this primary right atrium. It is guarded on the right and left by two sinal atrial valves, which again will become the eustachian and the crista terminalis when the sinus venosus regresses as the heart develops in utero and, and, uh, and as get, we're getting ready for delivery. The right sinal atrial valve regresses to become the eustachian valve and the left SA now becomes the septum sparium, which eventually becomes the crista terminalis. The degree of regression differs widely between one individual to another. So we will often see this in TE where somebody has a very prominent eustachian valve where very prominent crista terminalis. From a clinical point of view, it means absolutely nothing, but can raise suspicion in someone who's seeing this person's echo for the very first time. Also to note, interesting, the wall of the sinus venosus becomes a smooth part of the RA, which is now called the sinus venarum. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for your attention.